Okay, I wanted to create a short video here to explain uh, as we get into this last week of, of classes and finishing our first draft, our completed first draft for, for this Friday, May uh, 22nd. I'd like to discuss uh, three aspects of three parts of your uh, essay, the first being the abstract. And when you look at doing an abstract, keep it uh, between 150 to 250 words. And uh, you need to try to include the following aspects in your abstract. Now remember, it's one paragraph. And this paragraph, which is different than the rest of your paragraphs in your paper, should not have an indentation. So these are the things that I would include in your abstract for your thesis. You need to begin by talking about the problem that you're researching, preferably in one sentence. Then talk about the participants of your study. Uh, talk about anything with regard to the age, the gender, the, uh, the ethnic group, or racial group, any of the specifics related to your participants. Also talk about the kind of uh, study it is, so if it's a qualitative study, quantitative study, if it's a case study, uh, so describe what type of research it is. Also include the basic findings of your study, and uh, you can finish by any final conclusions that you made, implications or applications, how it might be applied to other areas. So these are really the essential parts of your abstract, again, keep it between 150 to 250 words, one paragraph, and no indentation. Now the introduction, this is the introduction paragraph, which should be approximately 200 to 250 words. This will be your first paragraph of your actual thesis. This will come just before your theory or your literature review. And I tend to think of the introduction paragraph in three sections, beginning with a hook. The hook can be a famous quote, it can be a question or a famous statistic. If it's a famous statistic, you need a citation. If it's a famous quote, just put the individual's name uh, or anonymous. Some famous quotes are uh, anonymous. And uh, the only reason you would need a reference for your hook would be if it's a, a, a statistic. If it's a, a number that, that you got from a source, you'll need to include that in the references. Uh, if you're just posing a question or you're including a famous quote, you don't need to include anything in the references. After your hook, you need to describe the context of your paper. Um, I also think of it in terms of the problem that you're researching. So the, here's a good opportunity to include at least one citation regarding a problem that you are researching. But as you describe the problem, you are also at the same time uh, providing context or providing some sort of scenario or prior knowledge that the reader needs to have to lead into the rest of your literature review. So think of it in terms of providing context, stating the problem that you're researching, and then lead into the very last sentence, which is your thesis statement. That is the main idea of your entire paper. Your thesis statement sets out to answer your research questions that you're going to pose at the end of your literature review. So that's what I would include in the introduction paragraph. The conclusion paragraph is similar to the abstract, but uh, different um, in other aspects. So. In your conclusion, this will be your last paragraph, approximately 250 words, but the last paragraph in your results and discussion section. So remember in your results and discussion section, you should have approximately 2,500 words, including your conclusion, and I would not include any heading uh, that would precede the conclusion paragraph. In the conclusion paragraph, again, think in terms of having three parts, I would begin by restating your thesis statement. Then I would talk about the past, thinking uh, in terms of your theory, talking about the key points of your theory, and uh, summarizing the, the key concepts. Then think in terms of the present being, recapping your own research, so your findings, you want to review those and uh, talk about the, the main points there. And then finalize your conclusion paragraph by thinking in terms of the future, looking at future areas of research any final proposals or suggestions that would take the, your findings one step further or how they might be applied in other contexts. 
and I would conclude your conclusion paragraph by having some sort of closing statement. So uh, something that you either originate or it could also be a, a quote to kind of just finalize or, or close your, your paper. So keep these in mind when you're working this week on your abstract, your introduction paragraph, and your conclusion. If you already have these developed, just take another look at what you have um, and uh, see if you're including the information that you need. If you're developing them, use this as a guide to include these key points. And if you do have any questions, let me know.